Good evening. Tonight at midnight, Bill number 19 will lapse into law without my signature. And when that happens, nothing will change except that the hospital will get more money. There won't be any slot machines at the stores, and there won't be casinos popping up. And bingo, cockfighting, kitty rides, and liberty machines will continue. Thank you all for your phone calls, email, and Facebook comments on this issue. Thank you for calling Talk Radio to express your opinions. I had a decision to make, and I realized that with whatever decision I made, some people would be angry. The important thing was to listen to all of you and then make the best decision that I could make. I'm quite surprised how this issue morphed into something bigger than it actually was. Two bills sought to increase taxes on existing gaming. One bill would use taxes for sports facilities, another to the hospital. The two bills became one, but not before some senators turned the whole debate upside down. The entire discussion became about gambling, and the twisted irony is the bill finally sent to my desk did nothing to limit or expand gambling on Guam. And whether these senators meant it that way is for them to answer to you. I'm not going to sign this bill for two reasons. The first is how the way this bill was handled. And the second is the amendment to ban bingo and cockfighting that didn't receive any public hearing. Now, fortunately, the amendment was defective because of a missing appendix. The bill doesn't have the effect of banning bingo and cockfighting because of a mistake made. And that reinforces my first reason for not signing this measure. But I'm also not going to veto this bill, and for a much, much more important reason. Bill number 19 sends more money to your hospital. And I've been there many times, just like many of you. Most of us are going there for more reasons than we want. That place needs money for the medicine in the IV bags, and for blood tests and x-rays that we get. And we need more nurses in the ER so you don't have to wait for so long. It's very simple to demand that the hospital collect more from its patients. That's impossible to do from patients who can't afford to pay. And it would be heartless and inhumane to let people die or suffer simply because they couldn't afford hospital care. I wish the political powerhouses who invested all their energy into the gambling issue could spend more time advocating for your medical care. Gambling addiction is a social disease that has the potential to destroy our community if casinos are allowed. But there are diseases like cancer, diabetes, and heart ailments killing people now, destroying families, and hurting survivors to their core. And if we can get them the medical care they need in our only public hospital, then that's what we should all be focusing on. At the end of this month-long debate on gambling, what do we have to show for it? A divided community, a war of words, a shameless showdown about an issue that just popped up out of nowhere. The product of this debate was a bill that did nothing about gambling, but actually does something meaningful for anyone who ever has to go to that hospital. And that's almost all of us. And so if casinos will remain illegal, and your hospital gets more money, that's a good enough reason to allow this bill to become law. Now, if the legislature wants to outlaw liberty machines, bingo, cockfighting, or other forms of existing gambling, then the senators should introduce a separate bill, and it should be done through a transparent process with public hearings and widespread community input. And if that should ever happen, I would caution senators to act with care and not haste. And I would advise something else. The people of this island voted several times to keep casinos illegal, but they have never spoken out about bingo, cockfighting, and liberty machines. And if the AG believes that these machines are illegal, then why did he drop the lawsuit and not pursue charges? It's because the AG has written that the law itself is ambiguous and conflicting and I would suggest for someone to clarify the law and for everyone to get back to the business of running the government. 
Now, buried under all this controversy are the yet-to-be-resolved Blue House cases, Cepeda case, DeSoto case, and all the other burglars and robbers police officers have arrested. This entire process has revealed some flaws in the system. And grave revelations were made about how bills are replaced with major amendments or how things appear out of nowhere after senators vote on certain versions of a bill. This is not the first time that this has happened. And there have been more important bills passed using these same tactics, from whole budget bills substituted to abortion bills. I hope this opens a new conversation by the media about this process. But more importantly, I hope this whole saga is over. In my book, Bingo players and cockfighters aren't causing any problems. Families and children like to go to Chuck E. Cheese and the amusement park at the mall, and the carnival is doing just fine. It's really time for the legislature to move its focus back onto the real issues that are facing all of us. Have a good evening, and God bless all of you.